Will one of Lex Luthor's darkest and most closely guarded secrets end up spelling death and destruction for Metropolis? Well, let's hop into the pages of Superman issue number six and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up directly from where the last issue had left off, Lex Luthor had been stabbed in prison and is now just barely holding on to life. Naturally, Superman blames himself, as at the time he was unable to hear Luthor and properly come to save him due to the ever-growing machinations of Dr. Farm and Mr. Graft. The worst part, too, is that Superman is really getting it from all sides right now, Livewire has got herself a brand new Daily Planet podcast thanks to saving Lois during the annual issue, and she's now using this brand new platform to publicly criticize Superman, saying that if the worst in Metropolis aren't safe, then how can they ever hope for Superman to save anyone else? And hey, speaking of the Daily Planet, and I certainly was, Lois is starting to really feel all the extra added pressure of not just needing to be a journalist, but also needing to be a boss. Feels like these days everyone wants something from her, and she says that her dream job is really getting in the way of her doing her dream job. Clark comes looking for help, a lead on this ever-growing case involving Farm Graft and the secret missing years of Lex Luthor during his early days in Metropolis. Clark also refers to Lois as Metropolis, much in the same way she always calls him Smallville, a joke that is both hilarious and took about 80 years to properly pay off. Unfortunately for Superman, the paper turns up a dead end when he tries to look for the chained, the phrase that Farm and Graf had used with him. Thankfully, though, this isn't Superman's only avenue, as he also has his own company now to lean on, Supercorp. Specifically, Mercy Graves, who was Lex's right-hand woman, so assuredly she would know where all the bodies are buried, right? Only here's the thing, she doesn't. Mercy wasn't there when Luthor first came to Metropolis, and there's still some files in their system that are locked so that only Luthor himself could ever hope to open them. And because, unfortunately, Luther has come down with a bad case of stabbed with prison shanks, he can't exactly help the Man of Steel right now, so if Clark wants to get anywhere, he's going to have to ask LL, aka that special AI construct that Luther had left for Superman, one that both looks like him and his father, Jor-El. As we learn via LL, the Chained actually refers to a secret prison project that young Lex Luther had been working on. He didn't work on it alone, either. He was actually assisted by 90 Superman villain Death Trap, as well as the very same Mr. Stryker for whom the Stryker Island prison is named after. To make a long story short, Luther had basically built his very own answer to the Phantom Zone, an impenetrable prison that would house the worst of the worst. A place that would keep criminals in a coma-like state while also turning any meta powers back on the wielder. Understandably, Superman finds this whole thing pretty damn distressing. He might make use of the Phantom Zone, but only as a last resort, so to think that Lex not only has this sort of prison up and running, but also has a prisoner in there right now. Clark's course of action is clear. He's gotta get down there, and he's gotta try and save this guy, though Mercy does advise against it, saying that the Luther she knows is a guy who was never afraid to eliminate problems permanently, meaning whoever this mystery man is that Luthor locked up in his special prison, he must have had a good reason for it, and also, he probably wasn't able to kill him. As soon as Superman finds this guy, it's pretty obvious why he's already been codenamed The Chain. He's an older man with crazy hobo hair who, once he's rescued by Superman, asks a very interesting question, and that is, did Lex Luthor give you powers too? Huh, how about that? Luthor's timing couldn't be worse either, as it's at that very moment he ends up coming to inside the ambulance. He calls out to Superman, which in turn makes Superman mention his name, and apparently The Chain still has a lot of bad blood for Luthor, as just the utterance of his name causes him to go nuts. Now, what exactly can the chain to do, you might be wondering? Well, it seems that he possesses some sort of amazing mental power. He can shape the very earth around him and even move Superman's heat vision away from hitting him. Superman doesn't want to fight this guy either. He only wants to help. After all, there's no telling the absolute metaphysical hell this guy has been put through by being in this experimental prison. Unfortunately, the chain doesn't care about Superman at all, instead choosing to lock him up at the same place he was being kept. This is bad for a couple reasons, because it means that Superman's own powers are now actively being used against him to keep him in place. That means that no one can actually let him out right now, except for, well, maybe Luther himself. And Luther's days might very well be numbered, as now that the Chained is free, he plans to destroy all of Metropolis. Why? Because Luthor loved Metropolis, and now the Chain wants to destroy everything that Luthor loves. And so that was Superman issue number six, everybody, and I gotta say, this is a great way to get back in the Superman saddle, following the events of Night Terrors and
and basically all of the new DC Dawn titles being put on hold. I like how rewarding this issue felt because it actually manages to pay off a bunch of stuff that they did in the annual, which was also good and you should also check out. I dig the design of the chain, but moreover than that, I like the idea that Joshua Williamson isn't just upgrading old classic Superman foes, he's also not being afraid to create some brand new ones too. The implications with this guy are great, I positively love the idea that a younger, more idealistic Lex Luthor might actually have played around with the idea of trying to create his own Superman, only for it to all horribly blow up in his face. This guy also has red hair too, which probably means nothing, but in the world of Superman, you can never tell what deeper meaning that could possibly imply. Is he related to Luthor? Is he maybe a distant relative of Jimmy? I don't know, but I'll certainly be interested to find out. Overall, I'd give this one a very positive 8 out of 10. Man, it's good just to have Superman back again, isn't it? Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cape Jewel, again. Thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description? Yes, that's right. The Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way, everyone, I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.